What is up, Flav City family? It's Bobby, and today we're gonna make some healthy comfort food meal prep because fall is here and we want those warm, comforting dishes, but we don't want all those calories and carbs and fat. So what if I told you we're gonna make a healthy version of spaghetti bolognese that is so rich and delicious? Huh, questioning me? Me, in my kitchen? I don't think so, yo, because we are making spaghetti bolognese. Ground chicken cooked with tons of veggies, herbs, and spices, and cooked in a zesty tomato sauce, and finished with shirataki noodles, and a really simple arugula and fennel salad. So if you love healthy meal prep and that actually has flavor, creativity, and doesn't tease you with some girl's boobs on the thumbnail, then you click on the video and it's some really, really crappy recipe, then subscribe to my channel. I'll never show you my boobs, <laughs> boobs, but I will show you some really, really tasty recipes. To get this light and tasty spaghetti bolognese underway, I have one and a half pounds of ground chicken thigh. I'm subbing out beef for the chicken because it's way lighter. I'm preheating a large pan over medium high heat. I'm gonna drizzle in two teaspoons of olive oil. I'm gonna go in with the chicken. Now you want the pan to be hot and start sizzling immediately. You wanna flatten out the chicken into one even layer. Now pinch over half a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. All right, I'm gonna let that cook for just a couple minutes. In the meantime, you guys, next week, my huge, epic KitchenAid Thanksgiving giveaway is launching, but because I love you guys, I'm gonna let you enter first. So down below in the description box is the official link. Every week for five weeks, I'm giving away one KitchenAid appliance for a total value of over $2,000. So enter, share with all your friends, and I hope you guys win because it's crazy. So give that a good mix up. And then I only wanna cook the ground chicken thighs about 80% of the way because I don't want them to get dry. Chicken, when it gets dry, is nasty. So I'm gonna pretty much take it out of the pan right about now. And then I'll transfer it to a clean bowl here. All right, chicken is done and it's already smelling really good. But now we will move on to the bowl of vegetation for this recipe. So in front of me, I have onions, carrots, and celery. I wanna pack in as many veggies in this recipe as possible. Don't even bother cleaning out your pan. Just go in with another two teaspoons of olive oil and then add the veggies. And then immediately go in with a half a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of pepper. So I've been making beef bolognese, like honestly once a week for the last few weeks. And I've been doing it on Instagram and Snapchat and you guys have been loving it. So I thought I would show you this recipe, but do it a little lighter with chicken. But if you do this with beef, oh, mamma mia, the flavors are unbelievable. And I wouldn't even brown it separately. I would cook the onions, then brown the beef, and then add the other vegetables. But because the chicken is lighter, we have to do this in different stages. And now I wanna add even more flavor. So I'm reaching for ah, dried oregano. Every Italian sauce I pretty much make has this in it. So go in with one teaspoon of that and then shake in half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I want these vegetables to really wilt down, so I'm gonna cook them for a good nine minutes. All right, you guys. While the veggies are doing their thing, I'm gonna show you what's gonna make this pasta dish low carb, low calorie, but still a legit delicious noodle. Say hello to shirataki noodles. It was one of you guys, honestly, a few months ago, told me about these noodles and I've never heard of them. They're made with konjac flour and water. And this whole pack only has let me do the math here. Uh, 30 calories and eight carbs for a half a pound bag. You can buy these at Whole Foods. You can get them at Walmart. You can buy them on Amazon. It's either called Shirataki noodles. This brand is Ne Soya, or I've seen a brand called Miracle Noodles. And they are indeed a miracle, but they're packed in a ton of water. Check this out. Once you cut open the packet, look how much water comes out of here. And the main ingredient in here is water. So think about it. If I want my bolognese sauce to be rich and creamy later on, I number one have to strain these, but I also have to get rid of all that excess moisture in these noodles. So I'm gonna crack open the rest of the packs and I'm preheating a large nonstick pan back there and I'm gonna cook all the excess moisture out of this. All right, so somebody remind me about those noodles in about five minutes. I'm gonna cook them over a medium high heat just so a good amount of the water evaporates. Now getting back to our vegetation here, check this out. Those onions get sweet, the carrots get sweet, and they've reduced by at least half. I want a really hearty, rich tomato flavor, so game changer alert. Tomato paste now comes in a tube. Check this out. I'm gonna squeeze in a good three tablespoons here, 
and I freaking love this stuff because anytime I open the can like this and I use like three tablespoons, it sits in my fridge, it gets kind of moldy on there. Now I don't have to worry about that. Toothpaste and tomato paste, now coming to a tube near you. I freaking love this stuff. All right, so cook this tomato paste for three minutes. When you actually do that, the tomato flavor gets even more deep and even more intense and it's outrageously good. And then add three cloves of garlic that are finely minced. Look in the bottom of the pan, you guys. This is what I'm talking about. All these little bits on the bottom of the pan are flavor. There's tons of concentrated flavor and this is what I call now a flavor bomb. So I'm gonna go in with store-bought marinara sauce because I'm a lazy butt and I am giving you permission to be a lazy butt too. But if you wanna be a hero, I have a recipe for a bomb marinara sauce. Takes about 45 minutes to make. I'll put the recipe below. But if you get one at the store, make sure it's no salt or low salt because you always wanna control the amount of salt in your dish. Now I'm gonna empty in this container here. Uh, uh, what the heck, man? Uh, Damn, I thought I've been lifting heavy at the gym lately. I guess not. All right, tomato goes in. And then add half a cup of water to the bottle and kind of just shake it around to get all that excess sauce out of there and get it in. Now, check out what kind of pan I'm using, you guys. Number one, it has high sides because I am a messy cook. Raise your hand if you're a hashtag messy cook too. And I don't want the tomatoes splashing all over. And I'm not using a cast iron pan because cast iron will react with the tomatoes and make it taste kind of metally and tinny. So this is the few, one of the very few times I'm not using cast iron. Now, because those tomatoes were completely unsalted, I do want to add a little bit of salt. So shake in about half a teaspoon, a few cracks of pepper, and then I'm going to reach for my ground chicken thighs and dump that back in. Okay, give that a good mix. I'm going to bring that back to a simmer. One more staple is always dropping a bay leaf in the pot. A bay leaf just adds a ton of flavor and all you need is one. So just drop it in. And then I can tell this is a little too thick already, so I'm going to add a little more water. All right, the noodles are done and you pretty much know they're ready when the bottom of the pan is kind of white and cakey like that. That means most of the moisture is gone. Feast your eyes on this pot, oh goodness. Look at that, the tomatoes are reducing. It's looking really chunky and you know what? I should probably check it for seasoning now because number one, I want a snack. And number two, I do have to make sure it has proper salt levels. Oh my God, this is really good. The chicken is really moist and meaty, perfect salt levels, but me thinks the tomatoes are a little acidic. And what I always do is reach for honey. You don't have to use Bulgarian honey from Desi's mother, but I do. And honestly, like one teaspoon of honey completely balances out all the acid in the tomatoes. If you don't want to use honey, you can use agave nectar, or I haven't done it, but I guess a little bit of stevia on here would work fine too. All right, I do want this to go another 10 minutes or so. In the meantime, we can get cracking on the arugula and fennel salad. But if you live in England, you call this rocket, which I think is a way cooler name than arugula. It's peppery. It's really, really uh, kind of a tender green. To pair with that, I have fennel. Have you guys cooked or ate fennel before? It kind of has this black licorice anise flavor. I freaking love this stuff. Desi's kind of on the fence about it. But what I do is I cut it in half. And then because I'm not an iron chef and don't have the perfect knife skills, I put it on a mandolin like this, and then use a hand guard to protect your fingers and just rock it back and forth. And the beauty of using this guy is that it comes out way fur thin, like super, super thin, like that. So when you're eating a really crunchy, hearty vegetable like fennel, you want it to be super thin. And then just run your knife through it so it's a little smaller pieces, and then add it to the salad. Because I want a little bit of heat in there, I'm gonna reach for a red hot chili pepper here and thinly slice it. Somebody asked me last week if this was spicy as a jalapeno or a serrano, and no, it's not. It's really mild. It's one of my favorite chilies because it's just not that spicy. Well, we have the colors of the Italian flag here, right? Oh, I love when that happens. Yes, totally unintentional. That is so cool. Now, save the top of the fennels. These are called fennel fronds. They're absolutely delicious, and it's kind of like getting a twofer. You get the vegetable on the bottom, and you get the herbs on top. So just pick them and pluck them in the salad. It's such a great, delicate flavor to finish. Instead of using Parmesan, I use its cousin, Pecorino Romano. It's cheaper, it's a sheep's, uh, sheep's milk from Rome, and it's delicious. So all I do is take a veggie peeler, because I want long strips, and I just shave it like this. 
And the beauty of using this cheese is it only has 20 calories and one gram of fat per tablespoon. Just mix the salad with your hands. Now look at that. It's a really, really easy but sexy salad. It's got great color. Now I'm not gonna dress this. I'm gonna keep this in the fridge as is. And when the time comes to eat it, I'm gonna dress it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, fresh lemon juice, salt, and pepper. And I'm gonna do that right before I eat it because if you do that ahead of time, the salad will wilt big time. All right, let's push this aside. Check on our sauce, which is just about done. Look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's just so meaty and saucy. It's like a proper ragu that normally would take maybe an hour or two hours, and this has been only going for 15 minutes. Now, just like I finish almost all sauces, I'm gonna take the spaghetti or the pasta noodle and put it directly in the sauce. And just make sure you have a really big pan here, which is why I recommend getting one that has the high sides. Now, keep the heat on like medium, and I'm gonna cook it for a good like four to five minutes because I want the sauce and the pasta noodle to kind of come together as one. And I want that noodle to soak up all of that meaty goodness and this is how you fool your palate or fool your friends and your family into thinking they're eating starchy, carby, caloric pasta. You can't even tell the difference, it's amazing. Don't forget to take out the bay leaf. It's done its work. All right, the pasta looks absolutely perfect. I'm gonna kill the heat on the pan and finish it with some fresh herbs. I have some parsley here that I finally chopped. And then I'm gonna reach for the Pecorino Romano again because it has so few calories and the residual heat inside the pasta is gonna melt that. Mm, that smells so good right now, it's crazy. All right, I'm gonna evacuate this into a container for the week. All right, I have my tub o spaghetti here. Now this is enough for five super hearty portions, but don't even worry about it because check out the macros below. It's super, super good for you. Uh, you can keep this in the fridge for five days, but you can't freeze it. Let's go ahead and plate up a portion here. Let me scoop in a big healthy portion of the spaghetti and then some of the salad that I dressed. And there it is, you guys, healthy comfort food, and that is sexy. Come on, if that doesn't get you excited about eating healthy, delicious food, I don't know what will. Speaking of eating, I am going into this pasta. Look at that. Mmm, sure, the entire nation of Italy is outraged right now. I'm using shirataki noodles and ground chicken, and yeah, maybe I'm never allowed to enter the country again, but it was so worth it because that pasta is silky and al dente. The sauce is creamy and rich and it's meaty and I don't even miss the beef. This is the bomb. You guys, the recipe is down below in the description box along with the storage, reheating, macros, all that good stuff. Make sure you sign up for my KitchenAid giveaway and share it with as many of your friends as possible. I wanna make this better and bigger than last year. If you wanna see two more videos, check out the ones below me. Until next time, hashtag keep on cooking and pasta la vista, baby.